Hello there everyone and welcome back to the 1600 AD mod for Empire. We're playing as England and uh, since last time I've done two turns. Nothing really important has happened uh, besides the fact that uh, we've got a new heir. But I don't think I can actually see the heir. So we've got an heir called George. And that was about it. Um, nothing more has really happened. I One thing that I forget to sh forgot to show you was the ministers. Which isn't much more than the fact that the um, head of government is a bit of an idiot. So we're going to kick him out. And we gained a new one. Which was uh, pretty okay. We also need someone that is a little bit better for uh, the Americas as well. So it would be nice to have at least a four star there. So with these two turns we have uh, the fleet of George Rock actually arriving now to be able to land the army over in Fort Albany. So we're gonna go ahead and launch the army onto land. So the army is now ready to march inland and see these Huron forces off. Which is a definite out-resolve. We lost 63 men, uh, the enemy lost 50, leaving 53 left. Which uh, is a bit odd that we weren't able to completely crush them. I cannot send any troops after them. They're simply too fast, the bastards. It's only the general. I think we'll bring everyone with us. I don't need to keep any troops here. And then with that, we'll march down to um, Fort Salut-Saint-Marie. Down in the Huron territory. Interesting thing here, I have my priest here. He was sent down kind of to scout. But also as a... Um, as a converter, being able to convert the populace. And the thing is, he's done such a good job of turning the populace to Protestant that 93% is now Protestant in this region of the native force. Now, there are only 5,000 people here, but 93% of them are uh, pro Protestant, while the ruling uh, elite, if you want to call it that, uh, within this nation, within this uh, native nation, um, are still uh, worshipping um, animism. Ani... Animism. They're worshipping, you know, birds and whatnot. Um, so that's caused a rift in between the uh, ruling elites and the general populace, which have led to a lot of religious unrest. And now with a major defeat of the elite, um, we are actually pushing past, and they c we could see a revolt in this native, uh, in these native lands. I've always kind of wanted to be able to somehow inflict through uh, economical pain, religious, you know, strife and such, to force you know an enemy nation to go into a uh, rebellion. But I've never actually been this close to actually achieving it. Even though, I mean, we're going to just steamroll it with the army and take it over. So it's not going to be that um, important. But yeah, we're on our way there. Then at the same time, we have landed our forces down here. So we could see about moving towards um, the Iroquois. However, I do think I will need uh, assistance in taking these guys out. I'm pretty sure there's hidden forces here, so it would be nice to have the spy. So we will just be just moving around in in this region to uh, keep the natives from attacking. Now this fleet is going to go probably actually hunt pirates. I'm thinking. Um, it looks like there's some ships that actually need refitting, so we'll head over here to refit. And then we see if we can't hunt some pirate ships, but probably need some y y troops for that. Maybe it would have been better actually to use this force to take over some of the pirate islands instead, because we've got sugar down here. 
on Trinidad Tobago and up here in Antigua we have uh, sugar as well I think that no the sugar is, yeah the sugar is in the Leeward Islands so we would gain some sugar which would be nice at the same time uh, my trade fleet is one turn from actually departing off the map on its way to Africa and uh, there isn't much else to say so let's go ahead and then turn and see how we continue forwards here with the army under John Churchill with the Benedict Thorne and Henri Monsieur following so yeah let's go ahead and then turn we've got an alliance broken in between Brandenburg and Poland Lithuania we have a technological advance, meaning that we can upgrade the farms in our kingdom. We have a letter of demand from Ireland. The Irish are still uh, quite troublesome. Isaac Newton becomes a factory master. So we can do better factory technology. He also becomes a rustic gentleman. Which means... Uh, oh, another point in industrial technologies. He's a man of all facets of life. Another three ships have been recruited to be sent to Africa. Fleet arrives and this is the fleet carrying the gentleman uh, Thomas Newcomb which is on his way to aid um, aid Isaac Newton. Though I doubt Isaac needs the aid because he seems like a pretty darn um, Pretty darn accomplished gentleman. We have a few uh, stuff being built here. A lot of opera houses. Governor's residence in Ireland. We probably need to build up more in Ireland. And uh, Maximilian Davis gets a mistress. He probably in government. Uh, and something about satire. What we're going to do is we're going to build up then um, the... I wonder which one is best. Do I get any special troops? I want to see if I build a governor's, um, a military governance, if I get any special Irish troops. Um, compared to if I just build... Well, we get the um, Scots Dragoons. Heavy Pikeman Holland Regiment, but I'm wondering if I it's not like I get that with um, Yeah, Holland Regiment isn't special and Scots Dragoons isn't special either um, So we're gonna go with Governor's Council to build that up and Then we're gonna organize the next trade fleet that heading out to uh, Africa to trade in ivory. So they're gonna head off. And then Newcomb is coming and you're gonna move in to refit the navy. Cost me 11 coin which is nothing. Then these guys are able to move. You know I do have canister. Maybe I could dare to go ahead and attack. Then the natives actually continue to press. The general continue to press. But I really want to press forward. I don't want to move back. So we're going to dispatch troops to deal with him. This guy and the cavalry might be enough. And then the troops that were already damaged. We'll do like this actually. The troops that were already damaged by battle, except... No, we'll bring the riflemen as well. And we'll send them to attack him. So 140 men versus his 43. Which we did well, but it leaves 19 of those guys still. He's probably going to attack to try and burn this place. So we're going to move into this uh, fur post. And this army is going to continue towards their capital. So another defeat for these guys. But they're actually happy. So I wonder if they 
They've probably exempt the region from tax or something. They've got nine... Oh, it's 100% at this point. 100% Protestant. Which, if I get... Can I get a breakdown of that? I kind of want to see if I can get this guy back here. Because we've got one point. Um, so that would be nice. Oh, and we've got one turn until Fort Rupert. Which is this place right here. It comes uh, online, as it were. Oh yeah, one of the, we need to build up those farms. I do think most areas in England is all... Liverpool is about to pop up. Definitely need one over here. Definitely need on Ireland so those guys don't starve. Or at least not right now. We'll see about later how I feel about them. <laughs> um, right, uh, let's see. What else is there? I can't think of anything. We might want to build an ordnance factory. That's about it. Technology wise, animal husbandry, reduced chance of food shortness and wealth generated by farms. Might as well, but it would be nice with a plug bayonet just to get going on this because I want military syllabus. Or maybe what I really should be doing is focusing on the navy um, to be able to uh, just force any, or you know, there's some of these that are pretty good. Now we'll upgrade it to a college and also give 5%. Yeah, that's probably the best right now. Then let's end turn and see if we can't march on their capital and take it. Liberate them in the name of our, Pro our Protestant God. We have some developments. Nation destroyed. Saxony was taken over by the Prussians. So the Prussians now control Saxony. They've also taken Western Prussia from the Polish. So they are expanding quite rapidly. But then again, uh, the Polish have taken Prague and Bohemia from um, the Habsburgs. And then I also note that Kiev has fallen to the Ottomans. So the Ottomans are advancing on Moscow. Um, is there any other European developments? There's a lot of back and forth um, in between the warring factions. There's both France and, France and Spain are at war with the Netherlands, but the Netherlands stay strong and has so far uh, weathered all the storms that the enemy put up against them. So they're holding out. We've got uh, some changes here in terms of people in the government, I imagine. A new town emerges, Fort Rupert. And what are we going to build here? Well, um, I don't really need a church, do I? I need money. So a crafts workshop. Then this guy is back. Damn it, old man, how many times do I have to teach you a lesson? Once more, we attack. And we attack. Now we lost the targeteers, but the enemy general was killed. We're gonna head over, make sure that the province stays firmly under our control. He gained confident general of fighting with that guy. Fleet arrives down in Africa and we're gonna head off so who's this it's bloody pirates um, I wonder if I should seek a fight with them right now I'm more interested to see how much gold I'll be making from this 2,000 that's pretty hefty sum once the secondary fleet turns up we could see about actually fighting them and taking that uh, fleet. They have a bigger uh, trade galleon, the Santa Teresa, which they probably stole off the Spanish. Um, looks like they're damaged as well. Or it doesn't indicate it on the flag. Why do I think they were damaged? It's just because the numbers of crew, 53, 95 and so forth. Yeah. Uh, but then ours is a hundred and hundred and forty two that could quite easily be boarding a lot of these claiming that fleet 
Company of Quenching Fire. Right, I want you guys. 2,000. That's a lot of extra coin for me. That uh, increases it to 8,000 per turn. And now the gentleman is about to land. So we'll be able to land next turn. And he'll be able to join Isaac Newton. And then on the way back, he can pit, uh, pick up the spy and put him to work in North America. Back in North America. I wonder if I should see about even going to strike against the pirates with my fleet. That might just help the others. Um, as I do not yet have a force to send to take the pirate strongholds. Uh, we're closing in over here. But I'm more interested in attacking here. Let's see how... The religious... Um, problems that we had in this province is now solved. One thing I want to see here is... Did they return? They returned just slightly to... Uh, um, Worshipping birds. There are a lot of crap, so I intend to outrestle this one. We lost 54 wet men while slaughtering the entire garrison, numbering a thousand people. That's one fifth of the entire population of this area. However, the population uh, remains unchanged after us conquering this region captured. Uh, trains gained brave soldier for John Churchill. There's a mine here we can build up. There's uh, what kind of mine is it? Iron. It's a gold mine. And then we've got more fur. However, I think I want to burn that one just to rebuild it as a European hunting grounds. Definitely going to burn that one and build that up. And then let's see, 1400. Yeah, that's okay. How much does it cost to 1900? Th those guys are pretty good though, so we'll do that. Um, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep them there. Next target for these guys then would be uh, let's see, where is the the Hurons are all the way up here. There's no I have no real desire to go ahead and chase them all the way up here for a little bit of fur. So instead we'll go to sandwich the Iroquois by marching down towards uh, Fort Detroit. While these guys will actually advance. I think it will actually advance and attack here. I think they'll do nicely. And then I want to just upgrade this place. But before... Right, let's go ahead and attack. So, it's a mighty force with that extra just manpower armed tribesmen. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to spell, dispel them pretty easily, but still, there's a lot of them. Uh, so, I have 600 men under my command, while the enemy has 1900 savages under the command of uh, Pontiac. Kevin McDowell against Pontiac. We'll see who wins. Let's go ahead and attack. We are setting up in the high ground, slightly above the enemy's position, as we can see from over here. So we hold kind of the high ground over here. The problem with the demi cannons is, of course, you cannot move them from the start. So I need a good position right off the start. And I think this one's pretty good. We'll be able to shell them down into their position, rather than if I had placed it down here. Where uh, there's some hills and stuff all in the way. We have some uh, more, some proper troops. We have the 1st Regiment of Foot Matchlock Regiment. We have another pike unit, which we've seen before. And then we have a large unit of 1st uh, Regiment of Militia Arquebusiers. Ready to move in. And we shouldn't be afraid to move in the general against these enemies. With all of that said, let's go ahead and start. So there's a massive bloody well force arrayed against us. 
which will draw the lines as long as possible and then back it up with pikes. We're going to back this one up with pikes. We're going to back this one up with the general. And uh, let's see if we... What are we bombarding right now? Okay, so we don't have the reach yet, but I definitely want to see if I can bombard the enemy general and possibly take him out before um, he comes into range now. See if I can bombard and take him out. I will do a lot to deter the enemy from attacking. Okay, moved out of range. We still had some cannon shots bouncing in there, but they didn't actually kill him. We killed one native in this, three in this. So we've killed four natives so far. We're gonna bomb. It's gonna be a lot of bombarding until they can actually get into position ready to march against us to fight. So I think I will uh, speed forward a little bit and. We've got a unit of enemy tribesmen charging directly towards us. I, these arquebusiers have actually a quite low range on fire. We've got canister coming in. Taking out a few. Seemingly not enough. Keep up the canister for now. I'm gonna organize where the canister goes. The general's gonna charge in, and I think it's time for that volley by the uh, arquebusiers. And now the general's gonna stop a lot of these guys. I'm gonna tell the canister to fire straight through there. We've got this unit kind of routing. We, ooh, nice volley going in through there. It's going to be down, a, I think, a lot to just a canister. And we should be ready to send in the pikemen, actually, to stop these guys. I want to fire th straight through there. This unit is wheeling on its own. Normally, I'm really annoyed when they do that. Now, I'm actually totally fine with it. Oh, get a shot through here, if you please. Yeah, shot straight through that. Oh, our general was killed. Kevin McDowell was taken down by the natives. That means that I'm just gonna... I'm don't, I don't really care that if my... Uh, my cannon shoots... shoots down any of his bodyguard. We've got the cannons now aiming for the enemy general to, in response of them killing our general, we're going to try to kill theirs. Fire! Can I get some good shots here? Straight into this mess. Pikeman about to take this unit out, that's nice. Move to stop them over there. Yes, nice. Shoot him. So he uh, retreats. The Arquebusiers. The locked in combat. The bodyguard keeps fighting. That's good. Ooh. Mm. It's not as good shots as one would want. This one's going to take out some of our own men. Looks like it mostly took out more, more of our men. We've got kind of a massive route possibly going on there. Form Pike Wall. Come on, can I get can I get at least some more shots out of these before you damn it? Abandon the cannon for now. I need to be able to support the um, these guys in a better way than shooting into the back. We're gonna move the unit up here. I think we can re reman the cannons. We have a lot of natives retreating away. Pikemen are holding on. If I can get some good shots down towards here, that would be nice. We've got the uh, matchlock infantry moving to flank. 
If you could low... God damn it. Get back on your guns. I want canister shots down towards there. This one fired, nice. Oh, two more shots. The unit are retreating, hold fire. Um, if you can fire towards there, might be good. Pikeman, I want you there now. Looks like we might be able to uh, oh drop the pike line nice they're broken meaning that we have captured the enemy territory oh no 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 hold fire damn you um fire on this unit musket men forward so our arquebusiers are retreating because we shot at them by us uh, by our own accord, or by, with our own cannons. At this range, you can see that the spread of the canister is a lot more effective. For the last fight here, it's going to be down to a uh, firefight in between our matchlock infantry and cannons against their bows. Keep up the fire, lads! Oh yeah, what's... Wait, oh! Wait, blah, blah, blah. I completely forgot my Dragoons! That would have saved so many lives! How did I forget my Dragoons? The first regiment of Colonial Dragoons. Great. I could have just murdered so many of them. Just by sending in my dragoons instead. That canister took out two men. Hold fire. Musket men can continue. However, now the dragoons... will be pushed into a charge. Hold your fire. Not entirely sure how you managed to die right off the bat there. But the King's Dragoons. And I'm charging them now. How did I. That's such a. Uh, that's such a miss. To completely miss such an important unit as my Dragoon. I guess I forgot them just because they. They're. Um, like. Um, Unit picture is just a white blob. So that's why I completely forgot about them. The natives were defeated. What they have left is the chief's bodyguard. Which we do at number. However, might be dangerous to attack them. Without the support of the rest of the army. And the thing is, the balance of power is not yet completely in our favor. So I'm kind of suspecting a um, an ambush. My troops are ready. Let's start by advancing the infantry so maybe we can get a shot off with the musketeers before uh, we'll send in the cavalry. Because this balance of power can not only be due to the enemy general. There must be more units there. And the thing is, now we're out of the re reach of our own cannons, so we cannot expect artillery support. Ah! There they are. Um, there's two units. I'm gonna pull back the cavalry. What we're going to do is we're going to move till the um, 
Must get men to quickly get into action. And then we'll be sending in the cavalry as soon as possible. Charge! Took out a decent amount of them. 23 of them. Cavalry, of course, completely annihilated the unit. We'll run down so many more of them. Let's have the Dragoon pass by. Ride through. And then we can tell these guys to uh, fire again. But this time... If they could do it against the enemy general, would be nice. Let's have the dragoons come back, charge in. Let's see, where are these guys going? They're going to the flank. Pikemen, quickly. Or are they? Are they going? <laughs> They're within the range of the cannon now. The enemy unit was cut down. The dragoons will charge further and now go for the bowmen. I'm now actually going to order them to fire on the enemy general. The bowmen should be no trouble for uh, my dragoons to chase those guys down. Plenty of men fell out of the general bodyguard. However, the uh, the warrior society the warrior society is the dangerous one. Form into a square, and then the musket men. Oh, where did those? But there was this a he secret bow unit there. Fired into our flank. Um, the Warrior Society is the dangerous one, because that's the actual, like, fighting unit. We took 30 out of it, but they are uh, definitely killing a lot more uh, Dragoons than um, the other units. We're gonna just attack the native warriors. Just keep these guys running about like uh, morons. Oh, the Dragoons are overstretched. There's only 18 left of them, damn it. Their force is definitely spent. And uh, now they're chattered and running. I wonder if my musket men will be able to stand against the uh, native warriors. We're definitely in trouble now. Combat losing slightly, it says. Drop the square and attack the enemy general. Move into the fray, pikemen. And start stabbing the bastards. We're losing plenty of musketmen. The, uh, the Dragoons are still shattered. It'll be weird if I just have my cannons left. Let's see if we can't withdraw the matchlock guys. Okay, let's try and actually retreat towards the cannon now. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I will be able to get my pikemen with me. They will uh, have to fight more or less until they die here. These guys are kind of routing. I wonder if they can actually take these guys on. There's a low number of these. They're bowmen. And my guys are actually quite a bit better. Oh, my pikemen are now getting surrounded by native troops. If these guys can win this fight, though, they could be able to... Oh, 
the pikemen were completely overrun. Come on, beat these guys before these guys are able to come and attack you. Eight pikemen managed to get away. Right, you were able to rout those guys, but now back to the cannons. That's your only hope of beating these, is canister. Run! Run! The enemy is now approaching for the final attack. There's two units left, plus the general. And I have, of course, my matchlock infantry and my cannons. Enemy general is trying to flank. Not very nice. I'm hoping that my canister will be enough to stop these uh, natives coming closer. What we'll do is we'll actually move back into line like that, facing them straight on. We'll get another shot into these guys. Why isn't this cannon firing? Would be nice if they did. I kind of want to hold back the volley as well. Until the enemy is really close. Or until I possibly be able to fire at the enemy chief. Right now, the fact that they're just standing there aids so much to our cause. Literally, just sh one of the canisters just shot one guy on the corner there. Oh, that's why. They got bloody bowmen hiding in the bushes. And they're expecting to use them instead. Where are they firing? They're firing from within here. We lost eight men so far. Okay, don't fire for the flank anymore. Let's see. There they are. Yeah, let's see if we can maybe fire somewhere around there. I think there might be two units of bowmen. That certainly is not great. I think we got, yeah, we got some bowmen there. Oh, just as they move, that's a great shot. But now these bastards moving into the flank, we don't like that. I'm gonna aim for that tree right there. Hope that there's a lot of bowmen hiding there. Really, maybe should be gunning for the enemy general. Ah, oh, it's just too low. Boom, got few in the general's group. Oh, the bowmen are really close here. Let's move to face them directly. Can I get a, f a flank shot through up, up through there? Oh, this is <laughs> going to be a really close fight. But I think I'm actually going to lose it. It doesn't look... It doesn't look like it's going to go my way. Fire at the enemy general. These guys are charging, my guys are wavering. And they're shattered and broken, yeah we've lost. There's no way just the cannon crew is going to be able to win this one. So we got close. But close of course does not win the battle. I think it's better to retreat than to fight to the very end. Uh, we'll retreat back into Virginia Company territory and regroup. And this is how the battle turned out. So Kevin McDowell was killed. We were unable to take down Pontiac. However, we took down 1,500 of his troops. 
but as we can see, we lost a lot of ours. Out of 600 men, we lost 520, only two units remaining, the Dragoons and the Cannons. Everyone else was killed. Um, pretty good stats though in the terms of the Demi Cannon managed to kill 475. Heavy Pikemen killed almost 300, same with the Matchlock, 200 each. Yeah, not a great loss there. The fact that we lost the general as well. I can't do that. But we definitely um, took these guys down. A uh, peg. A little bit. Um, yeah, not great move there. It was um, nothing more I can say really. There was uh, overconfidence. Um, there was just too many of them. With that, this episode is rather long, so I think we'll end it right here before I drag it out too much more. With that said, we're definitely going to come back and we've got a bigger force coming in uh, that's going to roll up the backside of their country and uh, take them on. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!